Oh, don't mind me, I'm just realizing that I was completely wrong. So a few months ago, I made a video about a really important topic if you're trading or you want to take advantage of tax loss harvesting, which I'll cover in a minute. Here is a link to said video where I talk about the wash sale rule and the case of a Robinhood trader who had a tax bill of $800,000, even though he only profited $45,000 for the year. Well, it turns out I severely misinterpreted the tax rules surrounding this, and I did a lot more research into this. It was quite the rabbit hole. There's a lot to read. So I wanted to clarify things. If this wasn't already clear, I am not a tax or financial professional. I'm just someone who likes to read random tax codes from time to time because I find that amusing. And I would love if you bop that like button and hit subscribe for more awesome content. And while you do that, here's a picture of a very cute pig. Okay, so some quick background and setup. When you buy and sell stocks or other types of securities, you're taxed on the gains when you sell and realize those profits. So assuming we're in a taxable account, if you buy a stock for $100 and then you sell it at $150, when you sell it, then you will be taxed on that $50 gain. But if you never sell, so let's say you bought at 100 and magically in the future it's worth a million, if you never sell it, you technically don't need to pay taxes on it because you're not realizing the gain. Similarly, you don't realize a loss until you actually sell the security at a loss. This is where you may have heard phrases like diamond hands or it's not a loss if I don't sell. In either case, generally speaking, your realized losses are subtracted from your total realized gains and that's the amount that you're taxed on for capital gains for the year. So so let's say you had a bad year and it actually turns out your net profit for the year is negative. You can actually use this to lower your taxable income, which decreases taxes. So if your income is lower, you're taxed less because you're taxed based on your income. You can actually use up to $3,000 in losses in a given year. And this is outlined by the IRS in topic 409 called capital gains and losses. And it's a surprisingly quick read. So if you heard this and thought, hmm, why can't I just sell for a loss at the end of the year and then buy it back the next day? Because in that case, you'll be in the same position, but you realize the loss, which helps offset your taxes. Firstly, awesome thinking, that's a great observation. Secondly, let's give a quick example. Let's say you bought a stock that was worth $10,000 at the beginning of the year, and at the end of the year, it's worth 7,000. So let on the very last day of the year, if you sell it at $7,000, you're realizing the $3,000 gain, but let's say, why can't you just go back the next day and buy it for $7,000? You would have the same position, but lower taxes, right? Unfortunately, that's wrong. In come the wash sale rule. So the IRS doesn't like the loophole I described above. So they implemented the wash sale rule, whose intent is to prevent taxpayers from claiming artificial losses. I'm leaving out a lot of details, but according to the IRS, a wash sale occurs when you buy a security within 30 days of selling it at a loss and quote, you cannot deduct losses from sales or trades of stock or securities in a wash sale unquote, the IRS. So the way I previously interpreted this, again, this interpretation is incorrect, was that a wash sale basically erases any loss you had from a tax perspective. So it's as if you never had the loss in the first place. So an incorrect, again, gotta make it clear, this is an incorrect example would be if I made a trade on, I don't know, what's the hottest meme stock nowadays, Newegg. Let's say I did two trades, one after the other, one where I made $500 and one where I lost $500. Based on my previous again, incorrect understanding, you would be taxed in this situation as if you made $500 instead of your actual net zero dollars. Well, that was wrong. Here is the part I left out, not on purpose, I just didn't know about it. The article about the Robinhood trader also uses similar language. For example, the article says he booked a profit but was disallowed all the losses because he never once waited the 30 days on those stocks to book the loss. But here's the thing, if I had read a little bit more on the tax page of the IRS, it says, if your loss was disallowed because of the wash sale rules, add the disallowed loss to the cost of the new stock or securities. The result is your basis in the new stock or securities. Blah, 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 words are confusing. I learn best with examples, so I'm gonna give one. Also a side definition, the cost basis is the original value or purchase price of something. So if you buy $1,000 of a stock, your cost basis is well, $1,000. And when you're taxed on capital gains, you're taxed on the difference between your sale price and your cost basis. So in the same case, if you bought $1,000 of stock and it went up to 1,500, you would be taxed on the $500 profit. So now for a valid example of what this whole cost basis updated thing means. So let's say you buy 100 shares of a $40 stock. It unfortunately goes down to 30 and you sell at 30. And within 30 days, you buy it back at $35. In this case, while well, the original $1,000 loss when you bought 
bought at 40 and sold at 30 is disallowed. The loss is added to the cost of the new purchase. That's still confusing, so let's give some numbers. That is to say, even though you bought the new shares at $35, so $3,500 total, the new cost basis is $4,500. And where that comes from is the purchase price of the new shares. So at $35, 100 is $3,500, plus the disallowed loss from before of $1,000. So even though the second time you bought the shares at 35, your cost basis is $45 a share. This actually makes a lot of sense. The loss isn't actually a race, it's more deferred. So if you were to sell at $40, so $4,000 at some point in the future without triggering the wash sale, your profit would be $4,000 that you sold the shares for minus your cost basis of $4,500. So your profit would be negative $500, which is what you would expect. And just to reiterate, because I completely botched this point the first time, the wash sale rule isn't a complete erasal of a loss, it's a loss deferral, so pushing it back in the future. I don't know why you get pushed in both directions, but pushed. So what happened to the poor Robin Hood trader who most likely had very severe heart palpitations when he saw the tax bill of $800,000? The wash sale rule normally isn't an issue as the loss isn't erased. Again, it's deferred. So for tax loss harvesting, like I mentioned earlier, most people just to get around it, they just wait 30 days to repurchase something that they sold at a loss. But the issue is when you defer the loss into the new tax year, which I think is what happened in this case. Something that would be okay is let's say you sold something at a loss on, I don't know, November 1st and then you bought it back like January 12th or something, that's at least 30 days, right? In that case, you'd be able to claim the loss for the previous year. But if you sold for loss on December 31st and then you bought back January 2nd, that loss gets pushed into the new year. So you're taxed on all your gains from the previous year without the losses included, which is I think what happened in this case. Hence the $800,000 tax bill, that is, that, that is something. So from my research, there are a few ways to avoid basically what happened to this Robin Hood trader. Again, not a tax professional, just me reading the tax code and extrapolating, I guess. One kind of technicality, I guess, is that you could trade in a retirement account. So like a Roth IRA or 401k or something. This might not be the smartest idea, but the reason it works is because these gains are not taxed. So you cannot trigger the wash sale rule. Two, if you're gonna be a really active trader, you can file something called the mark to market election. And I actually talked about it in my incorrect video about the wash sale rule. So check it out. I don't want to bore you with the details. Three, the easiest way to avoid the wash sale rule is to um, not trigger the wash sale rule. So if you sell something at a loss, wait at least 30 days before buying back in. Honestly, I'd probably give it 35 or 40 days just to be safe. A fourth, I guess, kind of workaround would be not to trade during the last 30 days of the year, because if you don't trade within those 30 days, the losses are not going to be carried into the next year. So you can take it for this year. Fifthly, if you have any specific or like relevant to your specific case questions, I would definitely talk to a tax professional. That is not me because I'm not that. So the tax code is a lot. I feel like it's unnecessarily long at times. I mean, this just this section about investment income and expenses is 76 pages long with tiny ass font. And there is so many rules, regulations, and loopholes, it's ridiculous. On a side note, I haven't been able to find any updates about the specific Robinhood trader who had the ridiculous tax bill. I'm curious if the IRS would do some sort of exemption or exception for him because this is kind of a crazy situation. Regardless, I hope this clarification was uh, clarifying and I'll see you guys soon.